Welcome to episode two of Having Faith in Fractals. Thank you for joining me here today. The topic of this podcast episode is going to be a rather um, in-depth one, complicated, hard to parse, I think because it has many moving parts, but I will attempt to just share what I consider to be the main points about it. Because otherwise we will get way too bogged down and it will be uh, incomprehensible to anybody. The topic I'm alluding to is why we, on a social level, so a large scale, not only individually, have this deep and sometimes almost irrational fear of being controlled or hurt by people or groups that we don't know. We can't see, we can't understand. I want to start off by kind of pointing to an observation that I've made, and that is that we as a a collective, I guess I can speak for really any society because I think this is a very human worry, have a big collective wound on our psyche. And... I wouldn't even say this is the collective unconscious, like in Jungian terms. This may actually just be the collective conscious, like we understand this. But some people channel this into directions that most people either wouldn't be able to pinpoint if you ask them. Maybe they're just like, I'm just afraid of, say, some people may use the phrase uh, government control take over, um, you know, they have a fear of like a coup happening or there's this big fear that somebody is going to, you know, come into their house or that they're not safe where they are, maybe someone's listening. And for the most part, these manifestations have a basis in reality, definitely. But how we're channeling them in this way is subject to be a little bit more uh, different strokes for different folks. So some people actually kind of make it their whole philosophy not to participate in any form of, I guess you could say, power. They, They remove themselves from power structures almost completely. And this can either be done in a very individualistic sense, or this can be done on a more say tribal level so what i mean here is is some people cope with this fear if they have it and i know a lot of people do is sometimes they become very hyper independent because they don't want to be caught up in the web and this web is it's numerous but if we're talking about on a social level say these are the types of people who are always afraid that they'll slip, you know, they're always afraid that they'll fall off the treadmill and they won't be able to get back up, or something's coming to take, you know, their uh, their wealth away, maybe they will, they're always afraid that they're gonna be replaced, or something like that. They're always afraid that someone else is pulling their strings and they have no real control over either their workplace, let's say, maybe their home life, their security, etc. We see a lot of insecurity here, and and I'm not trying to, you know, kind of stick pins in these people because it is a real fear. It's a real concern that we are having to fight against. But this kind of hyper-independence, I think, sometimes manifests as a blame game in which people will ascribe to others who don't feel like this so either because they're not as aware or maybe they just don't care they're maybe they're more secure it you know it's not a good or bad thing but they'll say well don't you realize that you need this to stay safe or you need to have this so you won't fall through say a certain amount of savings or and they can be very practical concerns you know a certain amount of savings or you need to do X, Y, and Z, or you risk falling behind in some way. Or say, well, you you need this to keep your PC safe. You need this to keep your phone from being spied on. You don't want anybody listening. 
And sometimes I think this borders on paranoia or some people have a slightly overestimated sense of their own self-importance in the grand scheme of things. And you may be thinking that I'm uh, being a little harsh in this judgment and um, I think sometimes it just comes down to some people simply don't have an internal locus of control. So, like, every time something happens, it's just something is trying to keep them back. It's like something is trying to keep them back, or something's trying to entangle them in a web, or something's trying to, um, something's following them, you know? It starts to sometimes border on, like, you know, schizophrenia or schizophrenic psychosis. Maybe not even schizophrenic psychosis. There are other mental disorders, of course, that have psychosis. But it, you might, you probably get what I'm saying here. I, I, this collective wound on our psyche also stems from, I, I want to say, people's fear of being done away with. So we always hear this rhetoric of the robots can take over one day, they can control us, we won't be able to stop them, or if they don't control us they're gonna phase us out of our work, we won't be able to uh, work anymore, or people are afraid of being replaced, and uh, rightly so, rightly so. Some jobs are very much automated nowadays, and whereas with from my perspective, I think we should celebrate this as this means that people can now focus on doing jobs that perhaps they would like to do and can leave the automation to the androids or other technology like that. Some people see it as, you know, this is humanity's... This is the end game for humanity. The scientists and the people with the money and the power are just going to keep building up an empire of servants for their own sake and everybody else is just kind of going to be tossed in the the trash bin of history to rot away and to survive on scraps and first of all i think people need to understand that this instability is not something that you need to take with such fatalism because first of all I, there is a lack of social mobility, but that doesn't mean that you can't do something else. It doesn't mean that if you say, I'm not quite sure what would be a good example, I guess one thing I could say would be like truck drivers or something. If you drive a truck, there is nothing stopping you from just besides time and money, but if you can manage those, you can learn something adjacent to that or Perhaps you can apprentice, perhaps you can, you just need to shift your attention. Some people, you just need to pivot. But there are those who are like, I can't do it. This is out of my control. I can't, I can't stop the robots, <laughs> you know, like this is, this is it. And there are some people who, you know, they blame the people making the robots, which is, you know, the people making the robots, I, I make this sound very science fiction-y, but the people making the robots, I'm pretty sure, yeah, they want money and stuff, of course they do, but I don't think they're trying to genetically engineer a whole race of, you know, superhuman computers like in I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream that are gonna turn the world into some kind of radiation-poisoned, clay-filled wasteland where we're all just kind of crawling around in our bellies as the robots run us over with, uh, I don't know, Elon Musk's flying cars or whatever. But besides pivoting, there also needs to kind of be this accountability in a way that certain people will just take this as like, oh, this is all, you know, this is some people, depending on their or um, ideology, will say, well, this is the Jews' fault. This is the Jewish bankers and this conspiracy. It's their fault. They're the ones pulling the strings. They're the ones who have their hand in every pie. You can't possibly stop Jewish people from being born and occupying these echelons of society. And some people will also say like, you know, this one is the one of the more accurate assumptions, but it's like, you know, people who have a lot of money and wealth are the ones who get to, by, you know, participating in money, money markets. I discussed this in one episode of uh, Dictate, Dissect, and Discuss. 
by participating in money money markets they simply just create more money from whatever it is that they are trying to invest in or uh, there's not once you get to a certain income level there is not as much creation as there is just more accumulation from the money you have and yeah these people might be like well what am i supposed to do against that i can't do anything you know i'm, I'm just screwed i have to sit here and take it and hope that you know fight tooth and nail and hope that i'm not gonna get taken under the tidal wave and i'm not trying to be one of those people who's like yeah you can do you can beat the world just put on your big boy pants and smile and get in there cowboy no i mean it's not like that but there also doesn't need to be this like acute fear of shifting around the blame when there could be more not only healthier ways of coping with the fact that some things just aren't going the way we want them to but also coping with the fact that very often the people who are out to hurt you you know them they're not hidden from you of course there's esoterra there are things that are hidden you know i've i've kind of made this dichotomy where i talked about closed and open esotericism where uh closed esotericism is they don't far removed from you they're a cult they're hidden and they don't want you to know what's going on but there are also people who are kind of open esoteric, whereas they're not very not you can't really understand them at first and they they do appear to be more hidden but these are also things that have either been brought to the light by people who are not in the esoteric practice so think of people who do like whistleblowing investigative journalism or these are things that we are now discovering somehow and we are bringing them towards the light these are things that want to be discovered and sometimes, simply put, you don't need to be afraid of things you can't see or make up things that you need to be afraid of. Your things are there. It just borders on paranoia sometimes. I named this episode, you'll see the title of this episode is called Dead Ethel. And the reason I called it Dead Ethel is a reference to LSD. Because LSD's chemical name is lysergic acid diethylamide and as we know LSD greatly alters a person's uh, cognitive awareness of the world around them so their stream of consciousness completely changes they're in an altered state of conscious they don't know what's real what's up or down uh, colors fractal patterns if you've ever seen enter the void where the guy does DMT in like the first I don't know, like 15 minutes of it. And that seems like eight minutes long. That's what hallucin hallucinogens will do to you. But what I also want to emphasize is that when you're under the effects of LSD, things that are, A, you could just simply imagine bad things that aren't there and conjure them from something in your memory and bring it out and magnify it till it's this oh dear god terrible thing and you're on and you're having a bad trip and you're like jesus christ please get me out of here i don't you know i don't want to see that I, whatever but sometimes it's just something that isn't there and once you wake up you're like i was freaking out this whole time because i saw the lamp in the corner and i thought it was godzilla or whatever but it's not it's just the lamp and I can remove myself from this situation. I could just not do LSD again. I could just take back my perception, you know, shifting that awareness. The one thing you never want to do though, is you don't want to let your fear of being hurt or being controlled or slipping up or not having enough, that lack, that, that feeling of lack, that feeling of being, again, I use this analogy, being caught up in someone else's web and like you're about to be eaten because often a fly that flies into a spider's web we have ways of escaping a lot of these things we are not helpless we do not have to collapse under a learned helplessness we do not have to become you know misanthropic and write things off and become cynical and be like well i hate this thing 
and it I hate that it controls people like this and I hate that whatever whether it be the government whether it be very wealthy people whether it be uh, you know a certain ethnic group whether it be a religion these things do not control you especially if you are aware of them you shift and you don't get into a tizzy. You do not go on the spiral. Do not spiral. Do not, you know, become super, um, I guess, super disintegrated with social systems because you think that that's going to save you from your fear because it's not because it's inside. It's like if an animal s sees a hunter sitting in the, the bushes with a blow dart, it, and they get very afraid. Because something that they don't know that they can't control is trying to hurt them. But the animal does not need to get hit. It can run away. And yeah, sometimes, I mean, in certain situations, it's just very unfortunate, but we will get manipulated. Sometimes we don't have the knowledge, we're just not strong enough, etc., etc. Abusive situations happen all the time. But I'm talking specifically about things that are not personal. That deer has, if it learns from that, it has several strategies that it will not get hit. It can, it can move to a different location, scavenge later for food. And if it's another animal, camouflage is great, adapt. Do not let the fear overtake you and do not let hatred or, or uh, insecurity or that feeling of anxiety to kind of well up in you and make you start either saying things that aren't true, seeing things that aren't there, or overestimating how much of a hold it has in you. Because if you do that, you are not... You're going to be standing there like a complete dope. And that's one of the reasons... I should have discussed this at the beginning, but that one of the main reasons people have this fear, and it's a huge fear, a huge collective fear, is because people don't want to be the dope. They don't want to be deceived. People don't like looking stupid. People do not want to be the dope. They don't want to be the loser. They don't want someone to get one up on them. They always want to... They don't want to be the victim. And I I truly don't understand this. I get that some people don't like the word victim because it feels like it does not fit them, and that's fine. But people need to realize suffering, these things happen, and you got to sit in them a while to actually understand what happened to you. A, so it doesn't happen again, and B, sometimes just you need the emotional processing. That's it. It's simply how it is. And you cannot just be like, I'm not a victim. I didn't get manipulated. I wasn't hurt by somebody that I didn't know or something. I wasn't the dupe. I wasn't the loser. A lot of people don't want to sit in that for a while because they feel disempowered. I get it. But if you don't, you will be the dupe more often than you think. Or you will be so afraid of being the Duke that you will completely remove yourself from situations where you could even have the possibility of feeling that lack, of feeling that anxiety, of feeling that uh, insecurity, of feeling that hold on you. Instead of trying to break free, you're just gonna, you know, you're just gonna completely cut every tie. And that is not the way to do it. It's not, it's not how we should be doing things. I want to quickly um, talk about a Bible verse that I remember hearing, and it, to me, it highlights vigilance, but not over vigilance. In a way, I think it's good for people who, you know, do have a more, I guess you could say, neurotic temperament and are more concerned with things not being in their control. Again, maybe they have an external locus of control. Maybe they don't feel like they have a tight foothold on where they want to be in life or even life itself. Maybe they think things happen to them and they're just like, oh, I guess I got to take it. You know, I'll get a little pissed off, but I won't do anything about it. And here's the quote. Peter chapter 5 verse 8 in the King James Version of the Bible. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeing whom he may devour. 
at face value, you might be saying, well, Fina, this seems to be another thing where it's just like, you know, a human cannot, you know, get away from a lion. The lion is very powerful. We're, you know, just flesh tubes. How the hell am I supposed to slay the lion and live to tell the tale? I should be afraid of the lion. And you know what? I would say, yeah, you should. But in the same way, think about this. Humans have adapted their sleep patterns to not go out and forage or hunt, gather, interact with the outside world during the night. If the lion is hunting at night, if the lion is hunting in a certain place, don't be there. Acknowledge it, say, I'm going to outsmart the lion. Don't be there. Sleep at night. Don't go out there. If the lion is asleep at night, maybe that's the time to go out. Think about it. Think about what's happening, how you can subvert it, how you can go around it. Whether this is something you want to do by yourself, whether this is something you want to encourage other people to do with you. Do not be paralyzed by the lion. David slew Goliath. The point is, don't believe in everything you see. If you know something is a threat, like, again, if you know something is X, Y, and Z, uh, let's say that you are afraid that you are going to be fired. The boss, in that case, has an undue amount of control over you. Think about this. Have you done anything to warrant this? If you have not, keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing excellent work. Doing what's expected of you. If you get fired anyway, you cannot deal with that. That was something that's on your boss, but you can have a backup. If you think you're on shaky ground, try and get another, get another job. Talk to them. Say whatever, you know? Have one on the sly. Don't don't feel like you have no control and that you're just waiting for your boss who is a jerk to get rid of you. You don't have to you don't have to fall down. You don't have to feel like I'm always going to fall. I'm always on shaky ground. You don't have to, you know, say, "Well, I never want to be taken advantage of. I don't want to be in a situation where I can't have full control over everything." So I'm just going to completely disregard uh, situations where I don't 100% know every single thing about it. Not the way to go. You will rob yourself of many, many chances. LSD was the major drug of choice for people back in the day who were like artists, writers. What they didn't understand that when they were tripping is... Everything there is just a product of their random neural activity. If they realized anything or had a breakthrough because of that, it wasn't because, you know, something insidious had kept it from them, or if they had a bad trip, it was just evil that they encountered, or whatever, that they didn't know about. It was hidden inside their brain, and it's all scary and whatever. It's, it was simply that they just were in situations where they got manipulated and they were like, well, I didn't expect to see that. That's scary. That shouldn't happen. So what I'm saying is this. Dead Ethel does not have to be your nightmare. If you're worried about big government putting toxins in the water to turn the frogs gay, I know that's a really stupid example. But if you have any fear that something more powerful than you is gonna get the upper hand on you and is come at you right beneath your nose, you won't even expect it. Don't. Be smarter, outsmart things, outsmart systems, and be mindful, be aware, and take the outs that you can. Build what you can, grow. Sometimes it's not about just tearing things down. Sometimes it's about growing things from the garbage. But don't be afraid, because most times these are things, these uh, aphorisms are just motivated by people who are very fearful and very anxious about the future that they don't understand, 
and that they can't do anything about in their mind. But they're in a mind prison. Don't be in a mind prison. There is no LSD without your finger on the LSD tablet putting it in your mouth or dropping some drops into your eye. You have a lot of control over your life. You make some choices. Make good ones. Make ones that don't feed into a sense of your isolation, your atomization, your, uh, your helplessness. That's all I have to say for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. See you next time, and have a good day.